because the use of Bruno Fernandes today was disgusting, absolutely disgusting. This is a player who plays as an attacking midfielder predominantly. He's got goals and assists, and he sat there in the second half as the holding midfielder for most of it. What the hell is going on? Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Are you excited? I'm very excited. How long have we waited for this? Manchester United against Wolves and Bruno Fernandes in the Manchester United squad. And in the team is what we are hearing. It's not officially been put out yet as to what the rest of the team is. We're guessing at that. We're guessing it will be a 3-5-2. We're guessing that Bruno Fernandes will probably play where Matic is. I'm hoping for a 4-2-3-1. But it has been leaking out that Bruno Fernandes starts in this game for Manchester United. And to be honest with you, why wouldn't he start? You know, it's not like we haven't got loads and loads of... Uh, um, You've seen the interview, Bruno wanting to be the next Skulls. Will Bruno be on your thumbnails from now on? Well, he's on it today and hopefully he'll be in the future. Mark, would you kick your wife out of bed and make space for Bruno if you had the chance? Says, uh, no, I wouldn't kick him out. I wouldn't kick my wife out of bed. I'm, I'm not that way inclined. Um, I love my wife, but I love Bruno as well. He can come and watch a film with us. But look, um, there could be a walkout today as well. I mean, there's a lot. Let me just uh, see if we have got it. Oh, exciting, exciting, exciting. And... Bruno Fernandes does start, James starts, Mata starts, Andres Pereira starts, Fred starts. It's a back four. Yabba dabba do. We're playing with a back four. We've got De Gea, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Luke Shaw, Fred and Pereira, Mata, Bruno, James and Martial. Cash back, cash back, cash back. Brilliant. This is this is how we meet. You see, Oli's getting a second chance anyway. Whether he deserves it or not, Oli is going to get a second chance with us. That's just the way we're going to roll on this. But, 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 and I say this with a big but, Kim Kardashian into house, I say this with a big but, he is getting a chance, he is getting a chance Ollie. but he's also gone and done something today that I think was absolutely essential, was to not put go with three at the back, and I'm so, so pleased that he hasn't done that. to Bruno Fernandes, and everyone says, well, one player's not going to make a difference, but if you're at work tomorrow, and some brilliant new person comes work walking in um, and it could be an attractive woman, it could be an attractive man, it could be an inspiring person, whatever it is that gets you going, how you worked yesterday might be very different how you work tomorrow, but you were there yesterday. And that's what I mean. Bruno Fernandes walking in isn't just Bruno Fernandes walking in. It could inspire Martial. It could get more out of Dan James. It could inspire, you know, Fred to go up another gear. And that's what I mean. It's not just, everyone says, oh, one player can't make a difference. One player can make a difference. Eric Cantona made a huge difference to Manchester United. And people can say, oh, you're likening Bruno Fernandes to Eric Cantona. Well, why the hell not? Obviously not because we haven't seen him play yet. But in a hypothetical, why the hell not? Eric Cantona came from Leeds. He wasn't this amazing player for Leeds. He was, he was decent for Leeds, but he wasn't the player he became at Manchester United. And yet he came to Manchester United and took everybody up a level. Wolves could quite easily shut Bruno Fernandes down. They could man, man they could man mark him. There's lots of things they could do. Toss a ball at your Bruno, Old Trafford, a play. Toss a ball at your Bruno, Old Trafford, a plenty, Old Trafford, a plenty. If you've watched The Witcher, that's a cracker, Ross. That's a cracker. Say that if we'd sign nobody, he's, I mean, look, Sky have got him as a CDM as well. Bloody hell. Oh, for friggin' hell's sake. It's a 4-2-3-1 with Bruno as a CDM on the left-hand side. Oh, I, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely stunned. Why would you do that? Players are lining up. One of them's chewing his gum. I think he's trying to look cool, actually. You're chewing it too open-mouthed and that. You can tell you're shitting yourself, really. No one chews the gum like that. Um, Everything a bit static in front of him. And this is the problem he's going to have. He's got to get used to his teammates. And look, look at Martial. He's over on the left wing. Who's in the number nine position? There's nobody there. There's nobody in the number nine position here. How can you play a forward pass? Nobody's in the number nine position. Martial's on the left. Dan James is on the left. Stick to the position. Like, I'm going to get pissed off with Martial. You're number nine. Stop drifting off. He's done it again here. He's drifting in. You're the number nine. 
You give that ball to Luke Shaw. Get in the bloody box, man. What are you doing? This is exactly what happened against Man City. You're not a winger. Well, don't give it to Luke Shaw in the final third as the number nine and then stand behind him. Bloody hell. It really annoys me. You're the number nine. Players, the number nine. That's your job. Not a good cross. <laughs> Maguire coming forward. Shoots from distance. Yeah, we ain't playing Tranmere, Harry. Got in a bloody nosebleed there, shooting. We haven't created a chance yet. Bilal the lad, you're right, you're right. Strikers aren't attacking it. Give it to bloody Bruno there. Oh, Dan James. Bruno's on the edge of the box in loads of space and he tries to trace some stupid ball past two Wolves players. Simple ball. This is the thing. You can have a good player like Mata and Bruno Fernandes, but have, have, have they got players around them that are intelligent to give them the ball when they find the space? Worst player on the pitch for me is Pereira. He just, boun he just bounced off. Adama Traore, like a Malteser bouncing off a Lilo. Martial, we've got Bruno pounced on the edge of the box. Yes, yes. Oh, I nearly came. I nearly did something there. I could see it coming. It came to Bruno on the edge of the box. He hit it. I mean, he, what he does do is he gets it on target. That's where you want him, on that point. He's hanging around on the edge of the box. Lay him on. Oh, and he will be our next. Great. Um, I want to just jump in here and say this. I get a little bit tired of people saying, imagine when we've got Rashford back, Pogba back, McTominay back. I even did it in that half myself. But I must pull myself back and say... Rochdale came to United and played well. Sheffield United played us off the park at times and they don't have the players that we've got. But they've got good coaching. This excuse that we need such and such back, such and such back to be good, it's a poor excuse. There are loads of teams in the Premier League who are better than us with worse players because they're coached better. We should be doing better with that team than we are. I agree some of those players are crap, but we should still be doing better. There's no shot in the penalty box in that half. And this is a recurring theme for Manchester United. We don't do enough in the final 36 points ahead of us. Pereira, crap cross. What? Oh, no, it was, it was Fernandes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm losing the plot. I've just done my best player. I've just said it was Pereira and it was Bruno. It was a crap cross by Bruno, though. It was. Hey, you've got to be equal. You've got to be equal. You can't have agendas. You can't be biased. It was a crap cross. I thought it was Pereira, but it was Bruno. Yeah! Oh, no. That was so lucky. I think it's Greenwood who hits it and it deflects off somebody. I think I thought Petruccio's already diving, which he is. Mason Greenwood cuts in on his left. He's a long way out. He shoots. It hits a Wolves player and it looks like it's going to deflect in, but Petruccio's able to adjust himself. It goes off one Wolves player to another player and straight into Petruccio. It would have been lucky. It would have been lucky. But it's, um, it, and I thought it was going to go in because you, you knew there was a deflection and you knew Patricio was diving. And uh, we're going to do a double substitution here. Lingard and Delo with four minutes to go. What the, what's the point in that? A double substitution with four minutes to go. Have hopefully, well, hopefully Sa Saeed's hung around. Saeed was apparently going to walk out on the 68th minute, so it'll be interesting to see if he did. Didn't miss anything, if he did. Ollie turning attackers into defenders, says Ryan FTW. I'll tell you what, I've got to be absolutely honest. If Mourinho had done something like this on, on Bruno Fernandes' debut, there would be an outcry, wouldn't there? But we've got four minutes of added time. And Manchester United nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers nil on an evening where so, that promised so much. You know, some fans were excited there might be a walkout, Bruno Fernandes debut, and that again just look the the, the excitement of a transfer window is not going to take away the reality that Manchester United Football Club in its current structure has got no clue in relation to how it's meant to be, what it's meant to be, and where it's going. It's just. It literally is, lick your finger, stick it in the air and see which wind the way the wind is blowing because it is awful. It is absolutely awful. And, and look, today was meant to be 
the reset button, the start of something new, and people will say, well, Marcus Rashford's not here, and Paul Pogba's not here, and Scott McTominay's here. When the bottom line is, the bottom line is this, that Manchester United, no matter what, you've got to get out. Well, you can do what you want, but you've got to get out of that mindset, I believe, because this talk of, oh, we miss Rashford, we miss Pogba, we miss McTominay. Like, does Sheffield United have better players than us? No. Do they play better football? Yes. Does most of the Premier League have better players than us? Not most of it. Do they play better football than us? Yes. This is, this is coaching. This is simple coaching. When Manchester United were at home to Wolves, we've got an opportunity to close up on fourth again because Chelsea dropped points again. And we cracks of an absolutely dreadful performance. And I want to go straight in on Bruno Fernandes and say, I'm absolutely appalled. I'm absolutely appalled. For somebody who's wanted this player at our club for a long, long time, and I've seen enough to know he's going to be a good signing, but what I've also seen is we've got coaching, you've got no bloody clue what they've bought. I mean, maybe it is a fan service signing, I don't know, because the use of Bruno Fernandes today was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. This is a player who plays as an attacking midfielder predominantly. He's got goals and assists, and he sat there in the second half as the holding midfielder for most of it. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? What's the point in buying a player and putting him there? And you can say, well, Matic has been injured, but put somebody else there. Put him, like, all second half, we actually had the ball a lot around the edge of the box. He's nowhere near it because he's doing the holding midfielder's role. It's ridiculous. Like, for Sporting Lisbon, he never played that position. He played in a 4-3-3, but he was never 